Do you have to change an outlet, switch, or a device box? How do you make sure that all the wires get connected the same way again? I've wired over a hundred outlets, switches, and device boxes, and I've made my fair share of mistakes. So I'm gonna show you how I do it now so that I make sure that I get it right every time. Remembering the wiring in a single box that just has one cable in it, well, that's no problem. But once you get above that, maybe even a simple switch, you've got to remember, well, which wire went to which side of the switch? And oh my gosh, don't get me started when you have three-way switches or dimmers or multi-gang boxes. It's impossible to try to remember that in your head. I've tried taking photos on my phone as well. Well, that doesn't work so well because when you try to zoom in, it's really hard to tell exactly where every single wire went. So I developed wiring map pages. These allow you to document everything in a box so that you can wire everything up properly again. It's also helpful when you're putting in a new device box because you can mark where each of those wires is supposed to connect when the devices get installed. You can download these wiring map pages using the description and link below. So you can print them out and use them on your next electrical DIY project. Let me explain how they work and then I'll show you an example of using them. I have maps for one, two, and three gang boxes to cover the vast majority of residential wiring situations. Just print the page for the box you're working on. In the top left of the page, you can see the cable and grounding screw labels, so you have a consistent way to refer to each cable and screw in the box. Now I assume the common two cables into the top and two cables into the bottom type of box. If you're using plastic device boxes, you may not have grounding screws. On the right, there's a diagram of the device that is in the box. I've included two screws on each side and a screw on the bottom because that's gonna cover the most common outlets and switches. Below the device is a table to record which wires go into any wire nuts or other connectors such as WAGO connectors that are in the box. I use standard wire color references of B for black, W for white, R for red, and G for bare copper ground. In this simple example, we'll look at an outlet that has two wires coming into the device box. Now, before you start any mapping with the wiring maps, always test to make sure that power is off. I'm gonna use my tester plug here, and indeed no lights show up. You can also use a non-contact voltage tester to test to make sure that there's no power in any of the outlets. Then you can go ahead and unscrew the device from the device box. Once you've unscrewed the device, pull the device out a little bit from the box and use your non-contact voltage tester to again confirm that there is no power going to either of the wires or the terminals. Once you confirm that it's safe to work with it, you can pull the device out of the box and we can now start looking at what is in this particular device box that we need to note on the wiring map. When we look at what cables are in this device box, we can see one cable in position C2. We can see another cable coming in in position C3. So we know those two cables we are going to have to document and those are the only two cables coming into this device box. So we can see the ground that comes out of cable three goes to the first terminal screw and the ground from cable two goes to the second terminal screw. We can also see the ground wire goes from that second terminal screw, continues on and attaches to the ground screw on our outlet. So we'll need to mark that as well. Starting with our black wires, we can see the black wire from cable two comes around and goes to the top terminal screw. We can see the bottom terminal screw has the black wire from cable three. So looking at our white terminal screws here, we have the top terminal screw. That cable is coming from cable three and the bottom terminal screw uh, that white wire goes in behind and up here to cable two. So the documentation of our wire map for this particular single gang box with this one outlet in it 
uh, is filled out using that information. In the download, you'll see a section on how to deal with special situations, such as GFCI outlets, three-way switches, and dimmer or smart switches. If you're using one of these devices, make sure you read the instructions in that section. I'm making the basic version of the wiring maps available as a free PDF download to help beginner and experienced DIYers alike. It contains the wiring maps for one, two, and three gang boxes, instructions on how to use the wiring maps, and an example that includes uh, different terminals, uh, wire nuts, and even pigtails. If you do download the wiring maps using the link in the description down below, please leave me a comment and give me any suggestions you have for improvements. I'm also working on an advanced version that has individual PDF files for the one, two, and three gang boxes, more examples to learn from, instructions on how to fill out these wiring maps if you're using a phone or a tablet so you don't have to print them, and also a video of me using the wiring map to deal with a very complex situation of a junction box. You can get all the details about both of the versions using the link in the description down below. So now when you tackle a DIY home electrical project, you can make sure that you wire all of the devices back the way that they need to so they work the first time. If you found this information helpful, here are some other videos I think you'll also find helpful. Thanks for watching.